Hello and welcome to Plant Tissue Culture series of Explore Bio. In my previous video, I have discussed about regeneration in plants and how plant tissue culture helps to regenerate various plant tissues and even a whole new plant from meristem in differentiated cells. I have also mentioned that regeneration occurs either by organogenesis or somatic embryogenesis. In today's video, I will explain about organogenesis and its types, that is direct and indirect organogenesis. I will also discuss about the differences between the two types of organogenesis and some of the advantages and disadvantages. So let's begin. Whether your purpose is rapid micropropagation, organ culture, genetic transformation or any other, you need to make cell divide and regenerate. Organogenesis is a process of regeneration that involves the formation of organs such as root, shoot, leaf, flower and even the entire plant from a cell or tissue providing a suitable media and environment. In plant tissue culture, growth regulators primarily auxin and cytokinin and their ratio play a vital role in cell division and regeneration of a specific type of organs such as shoot or root. First, let's learn about indirect organogenesis. In indirect organogenesis, you take an explant which may be a section of leaf, shoot or root. Suppose you take leaf tissue as an explant. After surface sterilization to remove any kind of contaminant such as bacteria or fungi, it is kept on nutrient media containing both auxin and cytokinin to initiate cell division and form an unorganized mass of cells called as callus. Callus is regularly subcultured on the fresh media after every few weeks to supply more nutrients and hormones. To learn more about explant selection and sterilization procedure, you can check out my videos on them. After several weeks, when callus gains sufficient mass, it is shifted to a shoot induction media which is rich in cytokinin. A few weeks later, it is shifted to auxin rich media for root induction. This way, a whole plant can be regenerated. Callus can also be produced from shoot or root meristem, embryos and other explant tissues with different auxin cytokinin ratio or utilizing any one of the two. Generally, for most of the genetic transformations, callus serves as important stage for agrobacterium mediated transformation and regenerating transgenic plants. But the major problem with indirect organogenesis is that during subculturing, the callus may acquire soma clonal variation in which the plants regenerated are not genetically similar to the source material or the explant. And secondly, the process of regenerating plants takes several months. To overcome the above challenges with indirect organogenesis, we use direct organogenesis. In this method, shoot or root are directly regenerated without undergoing callus formation. Suppose you take a shoot section as an explant. You keep it on the shoot induction media having cytokinin to directly regenerate more shoots from it. Later it can be shifted to root induction media containing auxin to undergo root formation. As the callusing stage is bypassed, the plants regenerated using direct organogenesis are genetically identical to the source. Also, direct organogenesis is comparatively faster and cheaper way to multiply plants and hence used for rapid micropropagation of plants. Somatic embryogenesis is another important way to regenerate plants which I will be covering in my next video. If you want to learn more about plant tissue culture, types of explant, sterilization procedure, totipotency, how to set up a plant tissue culture laboratory, I have made a series of videos on them. Do check out my playlist on research and publishing, markers, techniques, genomics and others. If you find the video useful, do share it with others. Comment and email me in case of any doubts or suggestions. Thanks and stay connected for more such interesting stuffs.